Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. We have presidential candidate, Jank Uger on the show. Jank, good day, welcome. Thank you, Rashad, I appreciate it. Um, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well, man. So this is a different context. So let me first ask you, uh, what the hell are you thinking? Yeah, great question. Yes. Uh, so look, I'll tell you the reason that I launched the campaign. Uh, I, I'm worried, I'm very, very worried that Joe Biden's gonna lose and someone uh, needed to affect this campaign and uh, take it off the course that it's on right now. Cuz it's on a collision course with fascism. Uh, I believe that Donald Trump is an actual fascist. I think that he used the fake elector scheme to try to do a coup against America. Uh, and uh, and Joe Biden right now is down 10 points among independents. He's down in five out of seven swing states. He's down uh, 24 points on the economy. 75. I mean, this is really chilling, and it's sad. And I don't want to have to say this, and I don't like that Joe Biden is making me say this. But 75 percent of Americans don't even believe that he is going to survive a second term. It is insanity to run Joe Biden. Uh, in if it, if this is the most important election of our lifetimes, I would hope that every rational person would agree we should pick the strongest Democratic candidate. And not just go, oh, well, let's be polite and let's be deferential to, to people already in power. And Joe Biden would really like a second term, so his legacy is slightly better. Well, I got news for President Biden. Your legacy is not going to be very good at all if you uh, lost the country on your watch. You know, I have friends that work uh, in the White House. And according to them, there was no plan for Joe Biden to run for reelection, actually. That this was supposed to be a transition dynamic. Um, they would probably do the political thing with the VP, Kamala Harris, make her the pick, according to insiders. They don't really get along. They don't like each other. You know, it's normative in, in that relationship. So now you have uh, a president who 70% of the people who voted a Democratic primary are like, you know, we'd rather have somebody else um, other than Joe Biden. And then the numbers are completely opposite in the Republican primary, where you got uh, the majority of Republicans say, hey, we love Trump. And this guy's doing everything he can do to be as offensive as, as possible. Uh, I agree with you, I do think he's a fascist. But let's talk about uh, possibility and probability, all right? So here's your possibility, Jank. The possibility is you end up resonating, you get 10%, 15%, 20%. If that happens, if that starts to happen, all of a sudden, you may get a Senator Warnock that jumps in. You may get um, you may get the governor. You may get Newsom jumping in. You may get other folk who said, "No, I'm going to you know wait this one out." Actually, jumping into the race. What is your sentiment about that? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. If we're going to pick the strongest candidate, uh, we should have everybody that uh, is that qualifies uh, under that category in the race, so the voters get it to say, "Okay, no, we've heard them out. We think." This person is the best person, and we're going with them. So it could be anybody. It could be Governor Whitmer. She would have Governor of Michigan. She'd probably lock up Michigan, have a great chance of winning. Could be Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania, lock up Pennsylvania, beat a, a Trump acolyte by 15 points. Uh, so he, he's tough, he's strong, he's relatively moderate. He's got a twinge of progressive in him. And Governor Bashir in Kentucky, he's a Democrat in Kentucky, most popular Democrat in the country. And now, as you mentioned there, I'm starting to hear calls for Senator Warnock. Uh, but all of this is possible if Joe Biden gets out of the race. Uh, and so that's why I bought Joe Biden's gonna lose.com. Uh, uh, sorry, not Joe. I always make that mistake. Biden is going to lose dot com because now the Biden team is in a panic and they're buying all the other URLs. Okay. <laughs> and so you know you're in trouble if you're buying URLs about how your candidate's going to lose. I mean, they're worried about me. And and so, and the reason they're worried about me is because I'm a proxy for all of those other people. I'm I'm basically shining a light on this massive problem that we have that we have an 80-year-old uh who is way down on the polls. He's now that. He's at 39%, he was at 54% when he won last time. He's 15 points lower than when he barely won to Electoral College. So would Senator Warnock do better? Of course he would. Would uh, Governor Whitmer do better? Of course she would. Would I do better? Of course I would. I, I have incredibly popular positions that the American <laughs> people would love. And I don't right. speak like a regular politician. 
I tell you that there's massive corruption in Washington, things that resonate. But it doesn't have to be me, it just has to be our strongest candidate. You know, and I think one of the dynamics in our two party system, which is already horrible and because of corporations, in my opinion, is that you don't really get a selection. So you have this thing called an election that looks like a selection, but that's only a disguise. And typically, the individuals who are presented to us to vote for are people that have been handpicked by the same gatekeepers that we talk against in our social narratives, such as corporations and bank CEOs, etc. They have interest. And so we'll see the debate. We'll see the debate about a school in Mississippi. We'll see that public debate. But we don't see the debate when they vote for the banks and they're voting on the same side when it comes to that economic policy. Let's talk about you being a proxy. I think you said something quite interesting. And I actually believe that makes you one of the most unique candidates to do this. You're the first actual candidate that I've heard literally say both other people. Um, if you think they're stronger, both other people. You have also said if somebody has delivered for you, that's what you're supposed to vote for. That's how politics is played, right? Now, have you made efforts to talk to some of these other individuals on record, off record? To say, listen, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Look at the number. Yeah. So first of all, I talked to about a dozen people uh, to get uh, to get in this race, and uh, and I, I I tried everyone before me uh, because uh, you know some of you might have heard I have this issue that I'm a naturalized citizen. We can get to that in a second. Uh, but that creates an extra hurdle other than name recognition, other than all the other mainstream media and all the other issues that I'd have to get past. So uh, this isn't about me. This is about picking the best candidate possible. And everyone knows it's not Joe Biden. Yet we're all going, well, it would be impolite. So let's just crash into the mountain, okay? So I could explain that analogy in a minute. But um, uh, so now after that didn't work, and I tried everybody from progressives to mainstream candidates to John Stewart. <laughs> so, um, and and so then I realized, okay, we got to break the glass here because this is an emergency. So I, I'm an icebreaker. I'm a guy who can go in and shake things up and go, guys, this I need you to snap out of your trance because we it, it's not going to help us if we're in a MAGA like bubble. And our bubble is, oh, Biden is down 15 points from when he barely won. I bet he does a miraculous comeback. And that's our best hope? No, 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 no. And don't tell me there aren't other Democrats that could beat Trump. That's crazy. That's saying that the Democratic Party is awful. And it has no candidates that could beat one of the most unpopular politicians of our lifetime. No, I believe in the Democratic Party way more than that. And right, and Dean Phillips is considering getting in the race. He's a congressman. I've invited him into the race. I'm inviting all the governors. I'm inviting everybody. Let's go. Let's go. We're running out of time. Let me talk about a very interesting blueprint that I see. Donald Trump and Hitler. And I know those comparisons have been made in ways that create, uh, oh, here we go again, kind of response from some people. But let's look at the actual facts. Hitler attempted to overthrow his government with a small faction of individuals who were extreme. He was unsuccessful. They arrested him. They put him on trial. He gets convicted. They put him in prison. A lot of people forget this part of the narrative of Hitler. He goes to prison. They decide to let him go early. They don't. They do not give him the maximum. He gets out. He has now defeated the government that nobody really likes. He becomes their proxy for sticking it to the man, so to speak. And then the racism was already there. The issues that permeated in that culture are already there. He just personified them. And so he becomes this evil dictator. Well, it wasn't just him, it was a Nazi party. It was the philosophy, the ideology, the numbers were increasing. So now you have Trump. Trump attempted to overthrow this government with a small faction of extremists, comparatively speaking, they're small. Now he's on trial, multiple trials. Uh, civil, upcoming criminal. And Jenk, does he do the same move as Hitler? Is that energy back on this planet? If they don't lock his ass up and throw away the key. 
Yeah, I, I think he does. And, and so look, unfortunately, Democratic leaders have used a lot of hyperbole in the past. So uh, for some of them, they've got issues where uh, people perceive them as a boy who cried wolf. Yeah. But in this case, the actual wolf has arrived, right? And and I have never been in the camp of the boy who cried wolf. Uh, and so in, and even today, I will tell you, Ron DeSantis, I loathe the guy, but he's not a fascist. He never tried to end a democracy. He passed laws we don't like. He's done terrible things, and we're going to vote against him. But he never tried a fake elector scheme. He never tried a coup. He never had uh, supporters uh, break into the Capitol uh, chanting about murdering his own vice president. This is what fascists do. It's not hyperbole. He's a bona fide fascist. And then on top of that, Look, he said recently that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our nation. It is a weird thing to say. It is an unusual thing to say. It is a phrase lifted right out of Nazi propaganda. So only Hitler and Trump have used that phrase. He's basically telling you, hey, don't say I didn't warn you. I used Nazi lines. I had dinner with Nazis, Fuentes, etc. Mm -hmm. I said that there were very good people on the Nazi side. How much clearer did I need to be? I already tried a coup. And I told you, by the way, they're saying now we're going to bring in 4,000 shock troops. That's what they're calling them. And we're going to, they're going to fire most of the people in the executive branch and non political people. And they're going to replace them with cronies and what I would call brown shirts. Like we're not getting the level of urgency that the country is in right now. And if anyone got it, they would never run an 80 year old that. Two thirds of the country says, do not run. We do not want you to run. How intensely selfish is Joe Biden that he's going to risk the country and he's going to risk democracy because he'd like a second term. I don't care what you'd like. You've got to step aside. So my yeah. website is jenkforamerica.com. You could also get there from Biden's going to lose.com. It's Biden is going to lose.com. But guys, we have to do something. And so use me as the icebreaker because fascism is actually at our doorstep and is currently leading in the presidential race. Let's pick the strongest candidate. This is not rocket science. Who gives a damn what the people in power want? The Democratic Party is not supposed to be some authoritarian party where it was, oh, the president has said it, an incumbent has said it, everybody bow their heads. No, do not bow your heads. Support my campaign so we can knock Biden out and get some excellent candidates in this race to beat the fascists. You know, I've noticed over the years, uh, dear brother, that a lot of the US senators, a lot of the people in political power, they're actually in a bubble that separates them from the suffering of everyday people. And so the policies that they get to govern and rule on and, and promote, sometimes oppose, they don't really feel these policies. They don't feel them. And because of that, there's always this lack of experiential knowledge. They, they cannot understand how one election cycle can adversely impact so many people at one time. They can't feel it. Many times they don't have the social structure to help them feel it. So they're making a decision based on, well, it's a job profile. It seems as if this is the right thing to do because it's part of the party platform. And so you lack passion when you come to the table like that. Let's talk about his age. I don't think his age is actually the issue. I think his lack of delivery is the issue because Bernie Sanders was not a spring chicken himself. But he presented ideas that people actually gave a damn about, could resonate to, and were excited over. So they were excited about him. Um, Biden, he's he's not the new ideas guy. He's not the passionate individual to do, to make a delivery for you. He won't suspend normative rules uh, to make sure that we can actually pass legislation that makes sense. I believe that Joe Biden would have delivered George Floyd Policing and Accountability Act if he would have delivered. Um, on some of the uh, social programs related to um, enforcing uh, equal pay for equal work, uh, making sure the corporations did not get away with some of the massive violations that they're getting away with, including uh, criminal justice system, both judicial and police. If he would have delivered these things, we would have made college affordable, uh, free, uh, at least one or two options every state, et cetera, et cetera. If he would have done these things, Jank, I don't think we talk about his age as much. 
Yeah, look, there's two different things here. So first of all, on the age, it is what it is, and it, it, it depends on how well you're doing, right? So Bernie Sanders has not shown any sign of decline, but we're kidding ourselves if we can't see the decline in Joe Biden. The whole, it doesn't matter whether you, you love Joe Biden and you root for the Democrats. It matters whether you win the independents, and every independent can see the decline. And by the way, why is Joe Biden being stubborn? Well, when you're in mental decline, people dig in. And I've seen it happen to family members, and I've seen it happen to loved ones, and they get more and more stubborn. And so that this the decision should not be left up to just Joe Biden. Okay, now in terms of delivering, you're a hundred percent right, Rashad. So Public option is seven out of 10 Americans want it. It's incredibly popular. He promised it, didn't even propose it, didn't even bother. Yeah. Paid family leave, polls at 84%, gave it away, didn't fight for it at all in Build Back Better, threw it away instantly, right? Uh, paid uh, $15 minimum wage. Uh, again, intensely popular. He had the two Delaware senators vote against it. He's actually against $15 minimum wage. If you had delivered higher wages as people were struggling with inflation, you think we'd be in the situation we are today. If you delivered on incredibly popular proposals, do you think you'd be in the situation you are in today? And one last thing, they tell you that the filibuster is immovable. It is a lie, it is not yeah. true. That's right. The filibuster was lifted for raising the debt ceiling in the first two years. That was because they were worried that their beloved, the most important constituency that they have, the stock market, and people yep. who have money in the stock market and really wealthy donors, their money was in jeopardy. So all of a sudden, they got rid of the filibuster immediately for that vote. They're like, filibuster, parliamentarian, who cares? Who cares? This is really important. It affects rich people, okay? But when it came to voting rights, they're like, oh, sorry, filibuster, a parliamentarian, nothing we can do. Well, when you lie to people like that and you don't deliver, there's consequences and there should be electoral consequences here. So jankforamerica.com, I'm now doing updates on Facebook every day for the campaign. That's facebook.com slash official, And of course, at, at jankuger on Twitter slash X to get updates too. Because we have, we've got, you've got to use me as a proxy. We have got to get this guy out of here because he's going to lose. Jank, I know that it's difficult doing things like this, regardless of what people say, think, etc. I want to tell you, we appreciate the courage, dear brother. We appreciate the courage it takes to lead. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rashad. I appreciate it. And look, if I'm not a voice for people who are disaffected in this country, it's not going to work. But if I am their voice, that that is a deep and great honor, and I will take any sacrifice. Uh, to deliver for them and to sh sh shout from the rooftops what they want heard in this country, which is that we need strong Democrats to defeat fascists and to fight for us to get these bills passed. They're the incredibly popular bills, but you must fight your own donors to get them passed. Very well said. Every generation is responsible for securing and enhancing the freedoms that they've been handed. There is no perfect generation, period. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, Richard. All right. Um, I just want to say this before we go. It was Dr. King who told us, uh, don't engage in gradualism. If you want change, the change has to be quick, swift, has to be, well, radical. And they called our brother radical. So just understand what that means. That means that you actually want your demands met. That's what that means. All right.